On this episode of Speed Ass Garage, we're going to take the cylinder head off the 2JZ. I've already done it once. We're going to do it a second time. So what we're going to do today is we're going to basically take the cylinder head off. Uh, we're going to take the front end apart. I've already broken loose this bolt here. Um, of course, it's tight right now, but I've already broken it loose. And one of the first things we're going to do is, is we're going to set this thing at TDC. Uh, we got the white mark lining up with the zero. And we know for a fact we're at TDC because on the 2J, you got these little lines right there. And then you got one based on the intake and the exhaust. Um, I like to go a step further and make me a mark. Um, this line right here has to line up with these little tangs on the back of here. So what I like to do is we're going to change the belt. So I like to mark the belt that I'm taking off. Um, and that's just an extra way of making sure that when you put everything back together, you got the lines lined up. So let's go ahead and uh, take the front cover off. We'll probably start with the spark plugs first. Like most turbo engines, a lot of the stuff in here looks dark, but most importantly, the cam loads look just fine. All right, now we're to the point we need to take this cover off. So it looks like it is three Allen bolts. Let me find out what size it is and I'll let you know. It's an Allen, number five, number five. All right, the reason we took that upper cover off was because we need to take this off in order to finish tearing down the front. Water pump pulley. Harmonic balancer pulley. You're gonna need something like this uh, to remove the uh, crank pulley, AKA harmonic balancer. AKA harmonic balancer puller. Bloop. Get you two bolts. These two bolts are gonna thread into the harmonic balancer like so. We're to the point where we're ready to take the cams out but before we take the cams out we got to bust loose these two 17 millimeter bolts um it's a good idea to keep the tension on the belt um when you keep the tension on the belt with the combination of using an adjustable crescent wrench that's a, a 10 inch um you can use the crescent wrench to basically break these bolts loose instead of having the belt off and trying to break the bolts loose with that and the breaker bar um, what will happen is if you try to break this loose with the with the belt off of it there might be a chance where the cam can slip and if the cam slip it pushes slips it pushes down the valve and you have a potential case of the valve kissing the piston so uh, we're going to break these loose this this way All right, real quick, when I was trying to bust that loose, the crank and all that stuff was going counterclockwise. So I put the bolt back in, turned it back where these two lines line up. But I forgot to add too, if you look on the uh, timing gear, there's like a little indention and then there's like a little dot on the uh, oil pump. So make sure you got all three of them lined up. This, that, and that. Let's go ahead and take the tension off of this belt. All we're gonna do, is remove these two bolts on this bottom side and we're gonna pull that down, pull the belt off and then we'll take the uh, cams off. Take the front half of this off 
and then we'll take this plate off. Two 12 millimeter bolts for this uh, tensioner in order to take the tension off of this. Make sure you loosen both bolts evenly too because it's still got tension on it. Hey, take note also, there is not a bolt there. I made a mistake one time putting it all together, putting a bolt there and realized that no, a bolt is not needed there. Um, the bolt that goes there is the bolt that's on the front cover. 10 millimeter bolt. All right, since we got the front end torn apart, the last step of the puzzle before we remove the cylinder head is we gotta take off both the exhaust camshaft and the intake camshaft. A cool thing and the reason why I love import so much is that they got these caps labeled. Of course, this is cap number one on the exhaust side. So if you look right there, it's probably hard to tell, but it's got an E2, meaning that it's the second cap, E3, third cap, E4, fourth cap, and so on. Same thing over here on the intake side. And they all got an arrow pointing which direction they need to go. I like to go a step further and I like to take my little hole punch and I like to hole punch um, the, the number of cap on top on the center section. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I may even take my etcher as well and mark which one of these cams is the intake and exhaust cam. Um, I'm not sure if there's another way to distinguish the two, but if you saw it before, both cam gears are identical. Um, it's not a VVTI motor, so it ain't like you know for a fact this is the, the intake because it's got like a, a, lot, a lot more stuff going on. Um, you know what, it may even have it on the cam. I'm, I'm gonna do my thing because I ain't, I ain't I, just in case somebody wanna buy it in the future and also for uh, assembly purposes, I'll know. All right, we're to a point where it's time to take the cams off. I've already marked which cam is which, all the caps. Um, and the objective of this process is, is this shaft is pretty daggone long. Some of these lobes and lifters have tension on it, meaning that you just can't just take like these four bolts all the way off and leave these tight. There could be a chance where you can bend, um, bend this camshaft. So the whole deal is you need to kind of work your way from the inside out, outside in, um, little by little. So we'll start with this bolt, basically breaking them loose, evening them out. You've already seen me take off one cam. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that side off. Oh! Ew! Knock that side out. All right, we got both cam shafts out of the 2J. Um, it's always a good opportunity to check, make sure your lifter buckets and all that stuff look smooth, which everything does. And uh, this is actually the part of the 2J that is gonna get shimmed. Um, let me get a magnet real quick and take. Actually, you know what? Bump taking the magnet out. Uh, now we're down to the cylinder head. This is the part that almost had me messed up uh, when we worked on uh, Adam's 2J. Um, if you missed that video, I'll put it here. But make a long story short, the daggone socket couldn't get down all the way in there because of that. See that? It's a bunch of grime. Let me get something small to see if I can pull that stuff out. Look how much grime and stuff is stuck down in, in, them, in them head bolts. But yeah, over time, that crap just cakes down in there. What happens is the socket can't go all the way deep in there. Hey, and look guys, that's just an example of all the chunky material that was inside of all of those head bolts. This stuff right here will prevent the socket from going all the way down in those daggone studs and will cause you to strip that junk. And I'm here to tell you there ain't no space hardly to get that mug out. I got like a couple of them out, but I don't wanna do it no more, so. All right, for one, it's a star pattern. For two, it's a T55, T55. And then we're gonna bust all these bolts loose from outside in in a crisscross pattern. Y'all remember crisscross back in the day?
All right, speed ass garage. I mean, basically, we're done. Um, you done seen, we pulled a cylinder head off. Um, I tried to do a little bit more detailed uh, description of how to take off a cylinder head on a 2J uh, from the previous video when we did it on Adam's car. Um, but this portion here is done. Um, off camera, I'm gonna clean these pistons off, clean up this head, or excuse me, clean up the block to get it prepared for the head when it comes back from the machine shop. It's just that easy, guys. Off camera, I'm gonna put uh, both the OEM cams back in it, and I'm gonna deliver the new cams. Uh, let me go grab them, and let's show you guys what Jose decided to go with as far as camshaft upgrades. Why we about to be rocking some GSC uh, billet 2JZ camshaft. These are the Turbo S1s. I don't know what that means, but I would assume if they got like some S4s, these are the entry level camshafts. Let's go ahead and open them up real quick. Um, the little, they, uh, this, this, this camshaft here comes with this um, specialized camshaft assembly paste. Um, it's asking us if we got zinc. Um, I don't know, but I might need to go buy some more zinc tablets. Um, cause, uh, got the camshaft card. So for all the nerds, here is what's on the camshaft card. Looks like these are a 270 degree camshaft. I mean, it said 269, but you know how it is. You know, if you're in the Honda game and you got a two liter, it was technically like 1.999 cc's. You round that mug up. We gonna call this some 270 degree camshaft. Again, there's the part number. If you want to check out anything that, that uh, GSC has, uh, you can check them out on Instagram, check them out on Facebook. And it's always good to know that every now and then you can get a product made from the good old USA. at that you know you can't put a camshaft in unless you put the supporting mods for the camshaft and the supporting mods would be the valve springs when you got a camshaft with higher lift and duration or whatnot you're gonna need something a little bit stronger to keep them valves um, um opening and closing at the right speed if not that valve kind of go out and then it jiggles aka valve float and then when that mud cut break drop inside of that motor while that joker turning like 68 6800 RPMs, buy y'all. That buy y'all won't be my sound effect. It'll be the sound of your block, or uh, your pissing or whatever, or something going through the side of the block. So like I said, uh, these these biological coat cams, uh, excuse me, these biological coat valve springs came with a cool sticker. We're gonna see if Jose want that. And then you open them up. Uh, these are the valve springs. It's got the yellow mark. If you know what the yellow mark mean, let me know, but these jokers do need a daggone cleaning because this yellow stuff look like it's coming off. And then you can see it's got that yellow debris all over it. I don't trust it. Them jokers need to be clean before we put them in. And you know, just like in the Honda world, you can't do them valve spray unless you got them titanium retainers. These are the titanium retainers. That's the part number. Hey, and since we're talking about valve trains, since we got the motor out, let me show you another component that we're going to put on Jose's build. Why <laughs> Oh, there you go. We're gonna put one of these COVID masks on on Jose's bill because that mug is gonna be so hot it's gonna make you sick. Why y'all? We reached out to ATI Dampener. Actually, we didn't reach out to him. Uh, but we did get an ATI Super Dampener. This puppy is FFI certified. I don't know what that means, but I think it means something along the lines of extra 200 horsepower, and they don't give you no problems at the track. So there you have it, our work is done for the day. Uh, so now all we gotta do is load all this stuff up and we're gonna drop it over to Cylinder Solutions and we're gonna let our boy Robert do what he got to do on this cylinder head. So let's go over there. About to uh, drop off uh, Jose's cylinder head. Figured I'd take a second and uh, share a few updates with you guys about uh, what's going on around the channel. Uh, nothing's going on. Uh, Yo, that vulture, man, the wind, the wind up here, dude, is like crazy right now. We had a, a cold spell come through. Uh, I want to say it came through right around, right around that time where they, they did that, uh, cap, uh, the, that riot over there at Capitol Hill right after that, man, in North Carolina, man, it got cold, man. It, El Negro came through and it's cold. 
But uh, all right, back to stop. All right, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I was joking. Um, don't ban me. I mean, it's serious out here. I, I'm talking about the cold weather. Either way, um, so yeah, you already know what's going on with Jose Bill. We about, we about to drop off his cylinder head. Um, let uh, Robert work his magic on it. And then also um, an update on Stitch, uh, which is which is Adam's Adam's car. Uh, the build that we did on the, the first super build we did, his car was on the dyno. Uh, they had an ignition breakup over at Nice Up Motorsports. They end up doing, um, I wanna say it was like an AEM coil pack upgrade. I'll, I'll put the picture somewhere up in here, but it did a coil pack upgrade with an upgraded harness. Um, so that's gonna be pretty daggone cool on the Supra. And hopefully this, within the next few days, uh, we'll get some video clips of that thing running 20 plus pounds of boost on the uh, ethanol, you know, hopefully making around a 700 plus horsepower range. Uh, the Nissan, as you've already seen on previous episodes, oh snap, almost downshift from fifth to fourth. This junk is hard, man, trying to talk, look in your rear view mirror, and stay focused, and shifting gears almost daggone went from fifth to fourth. It wouldn't have done nothing, but I just almost did it. But yeah, I think I want to take the motor out. Um, uh, we're gonna build a 6.0, I'm waiting for Summit Racing to uh, get their Summit Racing Pistons to come back in stock. Uh, I mean, right the next day after Christmas, man, those drugs are sold out. Um, they have like some 30 overs or 40 overs that are available. I ain't trying to do that. I'm trying to do the most minimum four possible. Besides that, I want to. Put, we're gonna pull the motor out, pull the transmission out, take the motor apart. If the, if the crank is fine, um, I may just have uh, my boy Josh over at Underground Racer come over and help me. Uh, maybe put pressure the motor back up and, and, and reassemble it. Um, we'll see. I've been kind of getting familiar with a dial board gauge and a, uh, and a caliper. Um, I suck when it comes to math, but I'm, I think I'm figuring it out. And then if the crank is trash, I think me and Kyle are going to pull a 4.8. I've always wanted to have a 4.8. Hopefully to have the Gen 4 rods in it. There's one at a junkyard about an hour and a half away that I'm willing to take that trip, snatch that motor out, and, and I might not even check anything. I might even just slap it again. You know what? I might put a head gasket and stud on it and, and clean the heads and swap over valve springs and cam and all that. And that's it. Hey, and Nick, since I'm going over there to sell the solution, you want, me, you, you want me to pick up your block? You, you want me to pick your motor up? Just hit a brother up let me know. I, I'll pick it up for you and deliver it for a small fee of taking me for a ride in some of that hot, some of them hot cars you got over there. Hey, and also too, I don't think I, I told too many people, I got like a little EK Civic, and I'm thinking about doing a mid-engine rear-wheel drive, uh, J-swap in it. Um, I don't know how many people done it. I, I know somebody did it in a Dale Soul that was from North Carolina, but I kind of want to do something like that. You know, maybe we might put one in the front. I mean, shoot, may, you know, maybe we might, should we put an LS in it? Nah, I don't want to do that, that's weird. But I do kind of want to make a mid-engine rear-wheel drive Civic with a J-Series in it and start like building stuff for that. So Robert wasn't at the shop over at Cylinder Solutions, so I'm gonna take this opportunity and I think I am ready to pull the motor out of the Nissan.